almond for the baby and also a good source of fiber because chances are your daughter's constipated because that also sometimes goes along with circulatory issues in pregnancy. So that'll help keep things moving. And then as far as the pigment, you were saying she's hyperpigmenting? Got some um, dark spots? Parts of, her, parts of her cheeks, yeah. Okay. Well, I would encourage you not to use the drugs. If she goes to the doctor, she, chances are she'll get hydroquinone or some kind of drugs. And, and chances are, it, it doesn't mean that if she puts the hydroquinone on top of the skin that it's guaranteed going to get inside the blood, but you don't need to take a chance. Go get her some topical vitamin C and topical retinol. In fact, topical retinol and both topical retinol and topical vitamin C will do a couple things for her. Number one, it'll take care of the pigment and take care of the pigment in a nutritional fashion, not in a toxic fashion. But number two, if she doesn't have uh, stretch marks yet and she uses her retinol and vitamin C on her belly, she will prevent the formation of stretch marks to get a double benefit there. And then of course, uh, vitamin C and, and uh, retinol are anti-aging, so they'll help uh, build up collagen and elastin and connective tissue, et cetera. So go with vitamin C and a retinol topically. If you want uh, to check out my products, go to truthtreatments.com, and I would take a look at the retinol gel. That's what I would be doing if I were you. It's made with 5% retinol and 25% of the premium, premium vitamin C. And then you know what else? When she's done, when she has her baby, treat her to a chemical exfoliation at a nice salon that you have somewhere in Chattanooga. Make sure you're using glycolic or lactic acid and make sure the esthetician, whoever's doing the chemical exfoliation, is using a, mm, probably something like a 20% or a 30% solution with a pH of down around in threes. You, you can ask the esthetician, they'll be able to tell you. But you really want to, you, you want to be somewhat aggressive um, after, after the pregnancy, that's what I would do. Okay, is there anywhere, any place to get topical retinol without having a prescription? Truthtreatments.com. You asked yeah. the perfect question. For Truth the raw treatments. ingredients. <laughs> What's that? But not the raw ingredient. Too. Oh, straight retinol? Well, it's about as close to straight retinol as you're going to find, except I put, did put vitamin C in there, and then uh, I put a little transdermal penetrating ingredient to help improve the penetration. But it's pretty darn close. You, you can't get, I'll tell you what the problem with retinol, a couple of problems. First of all, it's incredibly strong. So... The most you're ever going to find in a product is 0.1% to 1%. Maybe if you go to a doctor's, you'll get 2%. But I put 5% in mine because you really need to have a lot. The problem is when you start going over 1% or 2%, you go into irritation, which is why you've got to be a master formulator or at least an experienced formulator like myself in order to figure out how to get that high concentration without causing irritation. And that's what our retinol gel, that's exactly what our retinol gel is. It's a high concentration of ret retinol without the irritation. Then the uh, vitamin C is also helpful, uh, so uh, that helps mitigate some of the irritation. The second problem with retinol, why you don't see it by itself, is because it's very unstable. It breaks down really quickly. So again, in order to use a high enough concentration of product, you've got to really be a really, really good formulator. And I've been doing it for a long time, and that's how I came up with the 5% gel. So I would recommend that that's what you use. If you want to go over the counter or not, not to use my products, then you're going to be pretty much stuck with a half percent or 0.1% or 1% or maybe 2%. And then you're going to get preservatives, and you're going to get the waxes and the oils and the emulsifiers and the surfactants and all the stuff that you, you don't need on your skin. So I would recommend the retinol gel. But whatever you decide to do, retinol, vitamin C, a skin peel using uh, alpha hydroxy acids, glycolic, or lactic acid. Does that help? You want one more thing? Here's one more thing for you, all right? This is really important, uh, and I'll be talking about this next week. Pantothenic acid, vitamin B5. Your daughter's probably a little bit oily, too, no? Probably, yeah. Okay, so that usually goes hand in hand with pigmentation and bodily stress. Oil, at, like pigmentation, oils, skin sebum, when it's produced in excess, is a sign of sugar uh, uh, changes or dysfunction in the sugar processing system and also stress and bodily stress, physiologic stress. And obviously, pregnancy is a physiologic stress. And then also, pregnant women oftentimes have problems with their blood sugar. So, consequently, oily skin and pregnancy and hyperpigmentation all go hand in hand. And pantothenic acid, vitamin B5, is the go-to nutritional supplement for skin oil and also for, for hormones, for estrogen, for, for progesterone. Vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, plays a very important role in how the body processes fats 
and how fats are turned into fatty hormones. So for anybody dealing with estrogen problems, progesterone problems, menopause issues, pregnancy, adrenal health issues, hot flashes, vitamin acne, uh, all of these things are really, uh, vitamin B5 can be really, really helpful. You do need to take high doses of it to get the therapeutic benefits of vitamin B5. All foods, pretty much all foods have a little bit of vitamin B5 in them. In fact, the word pantothenic acid means everywhere. Pan is, is Greek or Latin maybe for everywhere and so named because it's found everywhere, but not in high enough concentrations. You have to take it, uh, you have to take it as a supplement in gram amounts, three, four, five grams a day. When I was, when I was a teenager, actually when I was in my 20s, I started taking vitamin B5 for my acne, for my oily, oily skin, and it was a miracle. But I did have to take almost six grams every day along with the entire B complex to notice benefits. So maybe start her off on a gram or so of vitamin B5, panathenic acid, with her Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You always want to take your B complex together uh, and then uh, work her up to maybe two or three grams. Does that help? Very good. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless okay. you. God bless you and your daughter as well. Okay. Well, we've got about a minute here. Now everybody's calling. I don't know if I could get to, get to uh, any calls. I'm going to read a couple of these stories that I got here. I also want to read some letters. I'm not going to get a chance to do that today, but uh, we'll probably do it next week. I've been getting tons of emails from our appearances on Coast to Coast, and I want to get to some of them on the air because some of them are really interesting. But this is an interesting article that came out in the September issue of Gastroenterology. Many with non-celiac wheat sensitivity have or will get autoimmune diseases. How do you like that? First of all, a couple things come to mind when I read this. You can have a wheat sensitivity that doesn't involve gluten. Yes, that's why gluten-free is so silly. You can't just be gluten-free and expect to have pristine health if you have a wheat sensitivity. Wheat and all grains are very problematic, aside from the fact that they're gluten. So if, you have a, if you're gone gluten-free and you still have a problem, it doesn't mean that you only have an issue with gluten. You probably have an issue with wheat in general. Second thing that comes to mind is the link between autoimmunity and wheat sensitivity, between autoimmunity and the digestive system. I'm telling you, there's 50 million Americans with autoimmune diseases. They are digestive conditions. And to try to treat an autoimmune disease with a drug, with an anti-inflammatory, this is how they do it, is absurd. It's idiotic. It's crazy. It only benefits drug companies that are selling us these things. It doesn't benefit humanity. In any case, guess what the most important autoimmune disease that's associated with wheat sensitivity is? Hashimoto's thyroiditis, hypothyroidism. Where have you heard that before? Here on the Bright Side. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Apologize if we left you on hold. That's what I'm always saying. You got to call early on the program. If you're interested in joining the Bright Side Ben team, love to have you on my team. Please call the phone team at 866 735 2470 or head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and you can sign up or order Longevity products right off the website. And don't forget to check out truthtreatments.com for my skin health products and also Bright Side Health products for our enzyme products and also for the Bergamax. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Thank you.